One thing I often get asked as a TV reviewer is, what TV should I buy, given a budget of £1,000? Well, this is a brand new 65-inch mini-LED TV with more than 500 local dimming zones and 2,000 nits of peak brightness, yet cost only slightly above £1,000 in the UK. There is no way you can buy a 2023 model of similarly specced 65-inch mini-LED TV, let alone 65-inch OLED at anywhere near this price. By now, some of you may already know that I'm talking about the latest C845 mini-LED TV from TCL. It uses a VA-type LCD panel without viewing angle compensation filter from TCL's panel manufacturing division CSOT. With peak white aligned to around 120 candelas per square meter, black level measured 0.021 candelas per square meter on a 4x4 ANSI checkerboard pattern with local dimming disabled, amounting to a native contrast ratio of 5800 to 1. Of course, the TCL C845 Mini LED TV features full array local dimming to improve contrast performance even further, and we counted a total of 576 independently dimmable zones in a 48x12 configuration. While this represents double the zone count on last year's TCL C83, the local dimming algorithm on the C845 did not seem to activate properly, especially in low APL HDR scenes, causing dark HDR sequences to appear murky with a distinct lack of contrast. Although the Samsung QN95C crushed more shadow detail compared to a Sony BVM HX310 reference monitor, the top and bottom letterbox bars on the TCL C845 also looked greyer than expected, which was evident when watched in a dark room, particularly if there's no bright element on screen to stop our pupillary dark adaptation. In SDR mode, local dimming high was necessary to achieve the highest contrast and suppress backlight uniformity issues, as you can see in this side-by-side -side comparison versus the local dimming low setting. Similar to recent TCL TVs we've tested, engaging local dimming would cause the SDR luminance, gamma and color temperature to vary between different window sizes and APLs on the C845, even after switching off the dynamic brightness setting which is enabled by default out of the box. For example, these are the SDR measurements on a 10% window after calibrating our review sample to D65 white point and these are the full field measurements on the same settings. Which may explain why some owners are complaining about an overly warm, yellow-tinted picture full screen. While still not 100% accurate, we found that 1022 APL patterns corresponded best with real-world content in SDR mode, so we could still obtain largely natural-looking colors in real-life viewing by calibrating using 1022 APL patterns to achieve an average delta error of less than 1 on this challenging color checker SG chart where 140 patches were measured. Even with motion clarity disabled, the TCL C845 correctly performed 5.5 pull-down to present slow panning shots in 24fps content without telecynic judder. Engaging motion clarity would unlock further motion processing options namely LED motion clear backlight scanning, as well as blur reduction and jada reduction motion interpolation settings. Enabling LED motion clear would increase motion resolution from the sample and hole baseline of 300 lines to 1080 lines on this horizontally scrolling test pattern from the FPD benchmark software disk. Interestingly, TCL has increased the light output under the hood when LED motion clear is enabled so you will see a slightly brighter instead of a dimmer picture. There's noticeable flickering and double ghost images though, which most users probably won't be able to tolerate for prolonged viewing periods. In the most accurate movie picture preset, both blur reduction and jada reduction are set to zero by default, even if you enable motion clarity, requiring some manual user intervention to reduce motion blur. Increasing blur reduction to the maximum value of 10 would more than double motion resolution from the sample and hole baseline of 300 lines to 650 lines, but some trailing halos were visible, indicating some LCD overdriving. For 25p and 50fps broadcast material found in PAL countries such as the UK, 
Engaging motion clarity did not introduce frame skipping and microstutter artifacts observed on last year's TCLC83 across a variety of broadcast programs we watched during our review period, which is a welcome improvement. Dynamic acceleration would increase the screen refresh rate to 240Hz with halved vertical resolution, though using line averaging to smooth out jagged edges when upscaling the image to the panel's native resolution. When combined with Blur Reduction 10, dynamic acceleration would increase motion resolution to 1080 lines, but the trailing overdrive halos would become even more apparent, which limits its usefulness. Upscaling was softer and noisier than TVs from more expensive brands, but at least overscan can be disabled with standard definition content, unlike on Samsung televisions. Even though there is no film mode setting in the user menu, the TCL-C845 attempted to detect and process 3.2 and 2.2 cadences in film-based interlaced material with some success, but occasionally it would still lose lock. Likely due to the MediaTek HDMI 2.1 chipset, there is some posterization in the skies of the Martian. Owners can use the gradation clear feature to reduce in-content posterization, although the high setting would erase too much fine detail, so low is our preferred setting for non-pristine content. Our 65-inch C845 review sample was one of the cleaner TCL LED LCD TVs we have come across with some minor banding and dirty screen effect on full field grey slides, though the sides appeared noticeably darker and tinted owing to the limited viewing angles of the VA-type LCD panel. In HDR mode, peak brightness on our TCL-C845 review unit measured 2000 nits on a 10% window after calibration to D65 white point and more than 900 nits full field. On a 25% window, the peak brightness could even go up to 2600 nits. While higher light output is always welcome, the fact that the peak brightness is not largely stable poses a problem, because even though the C845's PQ-EOTF tracking was relatively accurate in mid-tones on a 10% window, the HDR10 tone curve would fluctuate depending on the window size, similar to what we observed in SDR. As a result, Many HDR scenes in CinemaScope movie would actually look brighter than a Sony BVM HX310 mastering monitor on the default gamma value of 0 in the most accurate movie picture preset, prompting us to adjust the gamma setting to obtain a closer match to the Sony HX310. However, for non-CinemaScope HDR titles, we found that we needed to go back to a gamma setting of 0 to better reproduce the creative intent. The bottom line is, Unless TCL fixed this APL-dependent, variable PQ-EOTF tracking, the HDR presentation in real-world viewing won't be accurate most of the time despite what the measurement charts say. Even after Kalman or Colorspace 3D LUT calibration which is supported by the TCL C845. DCI-P3 color gamut coverage came in at 96% in UV terms, whereas REC 2020 coverage was 79%, with the underlying spectral power distribution showing beautifully distinct red, green, and blue peaks typical of quantum dot technology. The TCL C845 provides a dynamic tool mapping function with three different intensities, but based on our testing in movie mode, it would always overbrighten the HDR presentation compared to reference standards, even on the least aggressive detail priority setting so we prefer to disable dynamic tone mapping in the interest of image accuracy. The TV supports HDR10, HLG, HDR10+, and Dolby Vision formats. HLG HDR material was mapped correctly on the C845, unlike the muted presentation on the Samsung QN95C. There's some crushing of shadow detail in the most accurate Dolby Vision dark picture preset, verified by the PQ UTF tracking chart. Next. Gaming. But before I talk about input lag, I would like to thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Since the pandemic, some streaming providers, including Netflix, have throttled the bitrate of certain shows, especially in Europe, resulting in a softer picture with more compression artifacts. This is where a VPN comes in. Surfshark allows you to stream content from another country without needing you to be physically there so you can watch Netflix at higher bit rates with better picture quality. 
Besides VPN, the new Surfshark 1 package also includes Surfshark Search, a lightweight search tool that lets you search the web without a trace. There's 24-7 live customer support, a 30-day money-back guarantee, and if you use promo code HDTVTEST, you will get 3 extra months free. So sign up today and give Surfshark a try. I'll put the link in the YouTube description below. Thanks again for your support. Ok, in game mode, input lag measured 13.2 milliseconds at 60 frames per second, which can be reduced further to 9.6 milliseconds by setting refresh rate to performance mode that basically performs frame doubling to 120 fps. Feeding the TCL C845 a true 120 frames per second video signal resulted in an impressively low input lag of 5.2 milliseconds. The TV also accepted a 1080p video signal at 240 fps, but the input lag was paradoxically higher at around 8 milliseconds, perhaps due to the line averaging interpolation process. So we would rather play at 120 fps for the most responsive gaming experience. Just like on TCL televisions in recent years, the default local dimming setting in game mode was low, so you will have to change it to high to unlock the best local dimming performance and the highest peak brightness, fortunately without increasing the input lag. Note that in VRR mode, the local dimming setting would disappear from the picture menu in game mode, even though local dimming was clearly still active under the hood. The SoC remains the same MediaTek MT5889 chipset, therefore only 2 out of 4 HDMI ports are HDMI 2.1, each supporting the full HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second. However, TCL has at least managed to migrate eARC functionality to one of the two 4K 60Hz HDMI 2.0 ports on the 65C845, thus truly freeing up the two HDMI 2.1 ports for those intending to use eARC with an external soundbar or home theater system. Once dynamic tone mapping was manually turned off in the game mode picture menu, HGIG would become automatically enabled, as you can see from the game bar menu. This provided a clipping point of 2100 nits for both max TML and max FFTML values in the HDR calibration app on the Xbox Series X, therefore preventing display side tone mapping from diluting the HDR impact in HDIG compliant games. Otherwise, the continued use of the MediaTek MT5889 chipset without coprocessor not only restricted Dolby Vision gameplay from the Xbox Series X to 4K 60Hz, but also handicapped the TCL C845 in several areas when it came to 4K 120Hz gaming. 10-bit gradation in HDR game mode was subpar according to this grey ramp from the Display HDR app, and the C845 failed to resolve full 444 chroma at 4K 120 whereas it could do so at 4K 60, suggesting that the issue lies within the FRL signaling necessary for 4K 120 bandwidth. While the TCL C845 could display full 4K 120Hz resolution, it exhibited occasional interference on this mixed resolution test pattern from the Ryan Masiola HDR10 test disk, although thankfully we did not see the phenomenon in real world gameplay. The TCL C845 could achieve 4K 144Hz resolution from an Nvidia RTX graphics card by using these custom resolution settings supplied by TCL Europe's product development team with working HDR VRR to eliminate tearing and frame drops, as evidenced by the NVIDIA Pendulum demo. The C845 could even accept 1080p 240Hz video signal, which is in fact the TV's preferred timing according to its edit. But given the halved vertical resolution and slightly higher input lag, we see it as a novelty rather than true utility. In terms of design, the TCL C845 features a central rectangular tabletop stand and a slim bezel when viewed from the front. We like the anti-glare coating on the TV, it's glossy and so didn't dilute contrast. It suppressed reflections fairly well, yet did not incur rainbow reflections witnessed on high-end Samsung and Sony mini LED TVs with viewing angle composition film. At the back of the TV, you can find an Onkyo branded woofer which contributes to the onboard 2.1 sound system delivering above-average audio by TV standards, with decent bass and volume sufficient for casual viewing. Listening to feedback, TCL is now letting users opt out of creating a TCL account when setting up the TV, which is much appreciated. However, 
Just like on every TCL television we've reviewed over the past couple of years, the mute icon will never disappear upon muting the volume, so you would have to increase volume by one notch to make the icon go away on screen. Potential buyers in the UK should be aware that the Google TV platform on the C845 doesn't contain BBC iPlayer, but TCL is supplying a free Roku stick to cover UK local apps, which you can claim by contacting TCL UK's customer service. To sum up, the TCL C845 is a well-specced mini-LED TV, providing several hardware upgrades over last year's C83, with double the number of local dimming zones, a higher peak brightness of 2000 nits, as well as cleaner screen uniformity on our review sample. The TV also features a high-contrast VA-type LCD panel, quantum dot colors, multi-HDR support, not to mention low input lag and two full bandwidth HDMI 2.1 ports capable of 4K 144Hz HDR VRR, yet somehow this 65-inch model is priced at only slightly above £1,000 in the UK, and so the TCL C845 receives our recommended Best Value Award. Now, at this price, you have to understand that the C845 won't be the last word in picture quality and software refinement. The TV suffered from ineffective local dimming algorithm particularly obvious during low APL HDR scenes on the latest firmware at the time we filmed this video in July 2023, plus somewhat inaccurate colors and HDR presentation due to its APL-dependent colorimetry. So we sincerely hope that TCL can address these shortcomings with future firmware updates to make the C845 more competitive in terms of overall picture quality. Of course, no mini LED TV can match the blacks and shadow detail accuracy of OLED TVs which boast pixel level light control, but some of you may still prefer to buy a mini LED over an OLED TV, especially in light of several issues unique to OLED which I've demonstrated in this video you can watch by clicking here.